Council Member Scott Irwin and the Pledge of Allegiance by Council Member David Montgomery Jr. Would you please stand? Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful fall day that you have given us, Lord. We thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed on our community and for each person that is here at this meeting today. We thank you, Lord, for the progress that has been made against uh, the pandemic, Lord, and we pray for continued, continued progress against COVID uh, around the world. Lord, we pray for wisdom today, today for our, our nation, our state, and for us in this council meeting today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please face our flag and join me in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, an individual, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Sorry. Roll call. Mr. Montgomery? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Irwin? Here. Mr. Darby? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Free? Here. All present. Council in Louisiana, would, in accordance with Louisiana Open Meetings Law and the adopted Bossier City Council meeting rules resolution, the City Council asks for order and decorum at our meetings. Please silence your cell phones. Anyone wishing to address the Council on any agenda item may approach and state their name and address for the record and shall be permitted three minutes to make their comments on the particular item that's up for discussion with up to four speakers per side. All other audience members are asked to please observe the meeting quietly, and if there is a need for audience members to hold a conversation or take a phone call, you're asked to please step out of the meeting. City Council appointed Sergeant at Arms have been instructed to maintain decorum and ask anyone in violation to step out of the meeting in order to maintain orderly conduct of the meeting. Council, we had a couple of requests for today on the agenda. Um, the first one was to, the mayor requested to remove item number six under new business. Do I need a motion to do that? A motion amend. A motion to remove that item? Yes. Second. Did you get a second, Phyllis? Yes, sir. Mr. Okay. Smith seconded. All right. Do we have any comments from the audience on this? Any comments from the council? Council, please cast your vote, please. Motion carries. The next item I have is uh, would add an addition to the agenda. It would be under new business and introduce an ordinance adding civic center supervision to the duty of the executive assistant Carol King Anderson and increasing the salary by $18,000 for the increased job responsibilities. And that was asked to be added by the mayor. And okay. Yeah. Motion amend. A second. Any questions from the audience? Council, do you have any questions? Please cast your vote. motion carries and that's all the changes that I have to today's agenda council oh, we have new business approve. that's if y'all if after the discussion y'all decide y'all want to make a change to that ordinance that's okay when, that we're, yes, when we're actually introduce it <coughs> yes sir okay and so I just need a, a motion to uh, approve the agenda, motion as to amended. Approve the agenda as amended second. second okay we have a motion and a second <coughs> Council, do you have any questions? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Uh, do we have any ceremonial matters? No, sir. There are no ceremonial matters today. We've got some bids. Yes, sir. Witness opening of seal bids for bid number 21-1517-109 Colquitt Street demolition. Good afternoon, Council. 
The administrative court voted to demolish this structure back in September 14th meeting. There's three addendums. The first one was to revise the asbestos report and list to the attendees at the mandatory meeting. The second one was to extend the bid opening by two weeks to today's date. And the third one was the final addendum to answer questions in a revised bid form. Our first bid is from 3Gen Construction, LLC. They acknowledge the addendums. Their bid bond is included. It is for $24,662. That's 24662.00. Our last bid is from Red Tail Contracting, LLC. They acknowledge the addendums. Their bid bond is included. It's for $26,950. That's 26950.00. I ask that the City Council approve the reading of the bids. So moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Any questions from the Council? Council, please cast your vote. <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you, ladies. Council, we need to go back up. We missed an item, the minutes, the approved the minutes. I move that we approve the minutes. Second. <coughs> Second. Questions, Council, do you have any questions about the minutes? Audience, do you have any questions? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. All right, unfinished business. Public hearing <coughs> for consideration for final adoption of the 2022 operating and capital budgets for the city of Bossier City as pre presented and previously amended. Any comments from the audience? Any comments from the council? Council, please cast your vote. No, there's no, there's no vote. It's a public hearing, so. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is public hearing. If there's no comment from the uh, audience, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let's state your name and address for the record. Yeah. David Crockett. I uh, live in 653 Dumaine, Bossier City. <coughs> general comment about the budget in general with this item as well. I, I'm, I'm a big advocate for conservative spending. And, and I'm really, with some of the recent issues with the budget, the new debt that we're taking on without knowing what the spending was, Mayor really had, had hoped that we had uh, possibly veto some of that debt so we could have a public discussion on those things. I'm really looking for, for fiscal conservatism. I sent a uh, article to all the members of the council and, and, and it may not sound like it applies, uh, I sent it about three weeks ago on budget balancing, but what it is is an article that was written by the University of North Carolina after the fiscal problems that the country had in 2008, 2009. And we are facing a period of, of financial uncertainty. We don't know where inflation is going to take us. We don't know how that's going to affect our city budget. And I'm just looking for more actions from the council that will be addressing these issues. I, I, I had hoped the public discussion that was coming out of some of the articles would have resulted in some vetoes that would have caused some of these issues to surface. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to comment before we close the public hearing? Okay, the public hearing is closed. Item number two. Are we gonna combine Yes, sir, if you make that motion, we can. If you wish, you'd have to make a motion to do that, sir. So it would be through? It'd be items number two through 20 if you want to combine all the budgets. All right, I'll make the motion that we combine items two through 20. I'll second that. And 
has to combine all the budget items into one reading. We will still have to have another one to adopt, <coughs> another motion. Say that again, Phyllis. You'll, this is just to combine the combine them into one reading, and so then there would still be another motion to adopt. Yeah. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions about combining these budgets, items two through twenty? Council. All right. Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt the 2020, 2022 operating and capital budgets as previously presented and amended. So moved. Second. Is there any questions from the audience? <coughs> questions from the council? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance to reappropriate $500,000 from the sales tax capital improvement funds for unplanned streets and drainage improvements. Final reading. So moved. Second. <coughs> Hi, uh, Wade. Can I ask you a question before we vote on this? I know you, we talked about, or we looked at the cave in on Schuler last week. Uh, uh, Ella, 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 I'm sorry, Ella. Yes, sir. And why well, hadn't that started yet? I mean, I thought we were we'll, we'll waiting day. on materials. No. Oh, really? Pipe, the pipe cannot be delivered until to, uh, Thursday. N none of the pipe suppliers in town. Had uh, had that in on their yard, so it was Thursday before it could be, and that, that's when we'll tear the inter we're going to tear half the intersection out, get that replaced, rock that all the way to the surface, and then tear the other half out, rock it, and then we'll cut that we'll cut that rock that we level up the the driving surface and put that in the other side when we and then pour concrete. Okay. Yeah, I wrote down there today and saw it, and I, you know, after we talked. I, I, have, I have that ordinance on, on and, I, and, I, and when that comes up, I'll have some, I've got some pictures for all the council members to see what you saw the other day. Yeah, I got some. I'll, I'll send them some, too, because I took it last week when we were down there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the audience on this issue? Questions from the council? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance authorizing and approving the engagement of Heard McElroy and Vestral LLC to provide professional services to audit the financial statements of the City of Bossier City, Brookshire Grocery Arena Fund, Fireman's Pension and Relief Fund, and Policeman's Pension and Relief Fund. Final reading. So moved. Sorry. Second. Motion carries. Any questions from the audience? Any questions from the council? Council, please cast your vote. <coughs> Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance to approve change order number six for the Tinsley Park expansion project with an increase of $25,540.67 for a total contract price of $12,827,298.53 with an additional 75 days added to the contract. Final reading. So moved. Second. I know we talked about this last week. Uh, any questions, Council? Any questions from the audience? <clears throat> Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance to appropriate funds to cover design and construction costs for drainage improvements along Fuller Love Drive for a total of $125,000 to come from Fund 400, Sales Tax Capital Improvement Fund. Final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions from the council? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. New business. 
Adopt a zoning ordinance, first and final reading, favorable by MPC. Petitioner Justin Marbot, Mechanical Cooling Services property, location zero Whitehurst Street or lots 11, 12, and 13 of Whitehurst subdivision. Request zoning amendment from RA Residential Agriculture to I-1 Light Industrial for an Industrial Mechanical Cooling Services office. Um, I'm Cole Marbot with Mechanical Cooling Services. Basically, we're a um, commercial industrial heating and air conditioning company and looking to build a, a shop on these three lots. Okay. Can so you can state your you? address too, please, sir? A business address? Yes. The current one is 1310 Driftwood Drive. Thank you. Do you need a motion? We didn't get a motion yet. Can we get a motion? Is the name I'll, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Was that Justin Marbot? Okay. Any questions for the gentleman? Thank you, sir. Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a zoning ordinance, first and final reading, favorable by MPC. Petitioner Teresa B. Miller, Bonomo Investment Company, LLC. Location 2495 Barber Street, Bossier City, Louisiana. Request zoning amendment from B3 General Business to RLD Residential Low Density for a future sale. So moved. Just state your name and address, please, ma'am. Uh, Teresa Miller, uh, 108 Chesterton Court, Bossier City, Louisiana. Can we make the second? Uh, oh, you want the the address of where we're going to? No, that's where we're at. We're living at now. Right now? Yes, ma'am. 108 Chesterton Court, Bossier City, Louisiana. Thank you. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate Thank it. Thanks. Council, please cast your vote. Did it pop up? Yeah. Mr. Irwin, did yours pop up? It did. I voted. It's showing are, I voted on Are my. you a yay or a nay? Yay. Thank you. I think you voted on the first one. It said second, didn't you? Yeah, probably so. Motion carries. <clears throat> Adopt a zoning ordinance, first and final reading, favorable by MPC. Petitioner New Singular Wireless PCS, LLC. Location 5401 Shed Road, Bossier City, Louisiana. Request conditional use approval for a small cell tower. So moved. Second. Yes, sir. Uh, Robert Vinay with AT&T 3115 D Street, Shreveport, Louisiana. Anything you'd like to tell us about this? Uh, so this is a small cell wireless facility that will uh, be installed to improve coverage in that area. It happens to be located on private property uh, owned by the Department of Health and Hospitals, and that is the reason for this conditional use permit. Okay. Yes, sir. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thanks. Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance amending the 2022 operating budgets to include a 2% raise for city employees not entitled to state mandated raises. First reading. Do we introduce it and then amend it, or do I amend it first? It, it's, it's up to y'all if y'all want to discuss it or why the amend, amendments are going to be made. I, I, I I'd like know. to propose an amendment um, to this proposed ordinance and um, to exclude civil service employees um, under three years of service. Um, it, it creates... Um, a nightmare that we've been through in the past as far as pay and differential pay and so forth according to the civil service the intent of the raise is to give those employees that are not entitled to annual civil service raises of two percent a two percent raise um, for their efforts and recognition during this COVID pandemic and to reward them for you know their loyalty for staying on with the city and continuing to provide a service um, 
in my opinion, unmatched anywhere to all of the taxpayers of Bossier City. So I would offer that amendment, and if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Chief, I think we Mr. need Montgomery a second. Stated it. Mr. Darby, second. I think Mr. Montgomery stated it fine. I mean, is there anything you need to add? Thank you. Any questions from the audience? <clears throat> David Crockett again from 653 Dumaine in uh, Bossier City. Uh, my only uh, question on this, I absolutely agree that maybe the city employees should uh, get, the, get the pay raise. My only question would be, I haven't heard any discussion or anything in the public about where the federal money that's gone to the state and the state is divvying out to the local communities. If this money, if you're actually rewarding people for what they did during COVID, if there's been any discussion about how that money could apply to this. And then also if you're rewarding people, uh, I don't think 2% is a problem. But if you're doing it actually to report people from COVID things, it can be things that can be done on a one-year basis or something like that. I don't think that there's, there's a problem with this amount. But I just throw it out. I haven't heard anything about how the federal money that's given to the state, that's given to Bossier City, that's going to get some of that money. Where is it going? I have no idea. If it could apply here, it would be nice to hear that. It doesn't apply here. Okay. Thank not. you. Uh, Mr. President, I'd just like to say that I, I want to – Think back. I think um, probably since 2018, we've not given a cola. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's it's been a long, long time. So I, I think we talked about that in the workshop that it was really our desire to uh, honor those persons who have made sacrifices just in the last two years, and I was glad that we we were able to to find the money to do that, and and, and I think they deserve it. And I'm glad that this council uh, has saw fit to, to make that uh, a reality for those that serve the citizens in Bossier. Thank you, Mr. Darby. Mr. President, I'd like to just echo Mr. Darby's comments and, um, and thank you, Mr. Darby and Mr. Montgomery, uh, for working with Ms. Williamson and, uh, and making, making this a reality. Uh, so thank you. Council, any other questions? Please cast your vote. Let me find my arrow here. Motion carries. Council, I would I'll need a motion to uh, introduce as amended. I make the motion we introduce as amended. I'll second. <clears throat> uh, I guess we're going to open it up to the public again if they want to speak on this issue. The one we just talked about. <coughs> Council, do you have any more questions? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance authorizing the city of Bossier City to charge an additional fee for all payments made by electronic means. First reading. So moved. Second. Mr. Jacob, would you like to speak on that, what we're doing there? Well, the city, for the sake of convenience of its residents and citizens and uh, customers, people who need permits, things of that nature, um, uh, allow certain payments um, of bills, fees, and other things um, by electronic means. Um, typically, the service providers, the electronic uh, devices, you know, the people that they charge a percentage um, of that, of the total bill or the total fee due. It, uh, so for instance, if you have a hundred dollar water bill, you pay by credit card, that service th that facilitates the credit card charges 4%. So you're collecting $96 on a hundred dollar, um, water bill. And so, um, there has been no ordinance put in place until now that would allow the city to recoup that cost. And if the customer um, wishes to pay by, like, with a uh, direct debit, you know, from a checking account, of course, there's no fee charge for that. If they want to come up here and mail in a check, there's no fee charge for that. But for those customers who choose to pay for convenience sake by um, 
credit card, this will allow the city to recoup the cost that that facilitator charges the city. Um, and so um, we discussed it um, with finance and it appears that the city is losing somewhere between two and $300,000 a year on these various fees. And this would allow the city to, and it's, it's not <coughs> uncommon when you pay by credit card, when you go out to eat, they charge you a convenience yeah. fee. When you go to Dillard's, it's, they charge you a convenience fee. It allows the merchant to recoup the full cost of the service. Uh, Mr. Jacobs, um, will that fee depends on the amount of the utility bill or is it just a, a flat fee? Well, typically the, the facilitating service charges a percentage of the, uh, of the bill due. Um, if they charge a flat fee, then it would allow the city to recoup the flat fee. If it charges a percentage, it would allow the city to recoup whatever percentage. Council, any other questions? And and uh, and if they use their routing number and account number and do an electronic transfer, that's right. free. If, if you have a direct debit, um, in the ba the bank generally does not charge a fee. The financial okay. institution, so there is no fee. If you come up here and pay with a check or cash, or money order, there is no fee. Gotcha. So it's totally up to the customer whether they want to pay a little bit extra for the convenience of going online and using a credit card. And there are several several departments we have that, that are taking credit cards, so it, it does add up. Mr. Montgomery? For clarification, we're not going to make money. The um, I spoke with Angela earlier, and whatever the fee is that's charged, it's handled on that end, so the city will not make money that in is the correct. transaction. The only thing we will uh, be reimbursed for is the actual cost to the city of the transaction fee. So, Any questions from the audience? Council, any other questions? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to appropriate $14,550 to perform a drainage study for Max Bayou and related improvements within the preserve phase two residential development to come from Riverboat Capital Projects Fund. First reading. So moved. Second. Any questions, audience? Uh, ben, is this the, uh, in response to the citizens' request that uh, Yes, we were both citizens and administration. Band. So this is, uh, we're using an opportunity. We're requiring the developer of the preserve phase two. We called, they've done a number of units there. They've got two more units underway and a large piece of property down in South Bossier and there's drainage concerns down there. Um, we're requiring that developer to do an extensive drainage study and they're we're piggybacking onto that to do some more study of Max Bayou down there because it's the problem extends beyond the limits of their development. We think we need to understand that better to be able to guide future development down there as it specifically relates to Bossier's floodplain. Well, I, I appreciate you and, and Wade's <coughs> efforts on this because the hydrology does seem to have changed around there. And uh, I appreciate this study to make yes, sure sir. that River Bend and other neighborhoods are safe. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Ben. Yes, sir. Any questions from the audience? Any other questions, Council? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to declare the completion of the water main abandonment project by ASB Utility Construction LLC at a total project cost of $410,643.25, including change order number one in the amount of $33,319.50, and to amend ordinance three of 2020, leaving a surplus of funding to supplement the Walter O. Bigby Carriageway Fund. First reading. So moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Questions from the council? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. 
Adopt a resolution permanently closing Union Pacific Railway located at Old Shed Road, Old Shed City of Bossier City and authorizing Mayor Thomas H. Chandler to execute any and all documents necessary to affect, affect said closing. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Mr. Harvey, state your name and address, please, sir. Tommy Harvey, 108 Esplanade Court, Bossier City. Mayor Chandler, President Williams and City Council, I'm extremely surprised to even hear that we're considering closing a east-west thoroughfare, partial or any, any uh, thoroughfare. In July of 2007, the City of Bossier approved resolution number 26 that included the Shed Road right away for a cost of $1.6 million. Thirteen years later, with construction cost overruns, various change orders, supplement engineering designs, and additional $305,000, upgrading Shed Road from two lanes to four lanes was complete. The total amount spent for the Shed Road upgrade was over $9.8 million. Thankfully, this was an 80-20 split with the state, so Bossier City's cost ended up being just around $1.9 million. It actually took four years to complete, and the businesses and homeowners who had to endure the construction issues were led to believe it would all be worth it. Now the city wants to discourage traffic from using Shed Road by closing their direct access to and from the new carriageway. Shed Road was supposed to be a relief road to move traffic safer between Airline Drive and Benton Road and, and discourage traffic from cutting through local neighborhoods. Closing the railroad crossing on Shed Road is going to force drivers that would have naturally exited the carriageway roundabout in front of McElroy Metals to seek a longer alternate route to get to Shed Road. They would either have to exit the carriageway at the Hamilton Road roundabout and go south to the light at Hamilton Road and Texas Street, then turn left on Texas Street and go east to Benton Road and turn left, then finally go north on Benton right Road and turn right onto Shed Road. Others may opt to stay on the carriageway until it intersects at Benton Road, then decide whether to backtrack south on Benton Road to Shed Road or to cut through the Green Acres neighborhood at Douglas Drive or Melrose Avenue, depending on their destination. Last Monday was the first that I had heard that the railroad crossing at Shed Road would be closed. The engineering design always included the shed, that shed road would be connected to the carriageway. Now, however, because someone dropped the ball, Union Pacific wants to play, let's make a deal. With Bossier City and make, this is a quote from the ordinance, the permanent structure of the at-grade crossing of the Union Pacific Railroad located at Old Shed City of Bossier as a condition of executing certain construction easements necessary for the completion of the Walter O. Bigby Carriageway project, end quote. If closing this crossing is justified because there have been numerous accidents at this crossing, then we should probably close half the crossings in Bossier. But that would be ridiculous, even though Union Pacific would love it. I'm asking you to please take time and look at this from all points of view. Closing a railroad crossing should be a well thought out and thoroughly studied action. Please consider the businesses in that area, traffic safety, and long-term effects of closing this crossing. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> Anyone else in the audience like to comment? <laughs> My name is Paul Rossini with NTB and Associates. I reside at 1428 Linton Road in Benton, Louisiana. 
Uh, this is Mr. Dirk Crone with TRC. 8550 United Plaza Boulevard, Suite 502, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70809. We represent the design team that's been working on the project. And uh, in light of the statements by the <coughs> gentleman, let's see, this is Don Clayton. Don, give your address, please. Don Clayton, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 4117 Parliament Drive, Alexandria, Louisiana. So what I'd like to say is last Friday, I uh, sent a letter into the city council and the mayor uh, kind of putting forth some ideas that I wish you would consider. And I'm gonna put enter a part of that in the record. The origins of the Walter O. Bigby project is currently designed as a result of a five-year process that took many things into consideration, including a permit process. The NTBA design team presented many options in those years to the then city engineer, Mark Hudson, to arrive at a highly functional, aesthetically pleasing facility that until recently, and by all accounts, the city was extremely happy with and proud of. There have been literally been years of meetings with many stakeholders who are expecting the current design, least of which is a successful contractor who would build the project. The proposed closing of Shed Road is a drastic change to all that effort, and it's being done in what could be characterized as a knee-jerk reaction. The surrounding owners and businesses may not even be aware of this dramatic change on how it may affect them. Excuse me. The original design team has not been a party to any meetings discussing the closing of Shed Road. In the five year design time since 2015 signing the contract, we have never heard that Shed Road was on the table to be closed. And we've not received any requests ourselves from Union Pacific to do so. Prior to the special council meeting on Monday, October 25th, I reached out to Clayton Manning at RailPros to gain insight into what was transpiring. In that call, I heard that there were still options on the table, two of which are to acquire the, perper, the proper permit or, yes, to close the crossing. We think there needs another step taken and some time considered before you do this, and that's what we have to say. Any questions? What, what would be involved in getting that permit if, if, if you guys have been involved all this time and, and well, you have not been at the table, I guess that's what you just said, but what, what would that take? You submit, the plans were actually submitted back in 2019 to Rail Pros, mm -hmm. the road crossing, for consideration of the permit. Mm -hmm. And that was in conjunction with the time we submitted the plans for the permit for the bridge. And so it was an ongoing process that Mark Hudson was spearheading. Um, and then when he was replaced, it really just kind of went away. So, Dirk, if you'd like to speak to picking it back up. If you look at the Union Pacific criteria uh, for gaining, quote, permit, there is a tremendous amount of information that's required for grade separations, whether it's above or below. But there, there really is not much being said as what's required for a grade separation. So for years and years, Mark Hudson, in coordination with Union Pacific, made every effort to keep Union Pacific abreast of what's going on. And at no time was there ever anything, and you've got backup documentation here, that says that ever talked about closing Shed Road. And, um, and Don Clayton could speak for that, but I'd like to read one email, one of the latest emails that uh, through coordination with the team, this was the last real coordination with the current representative for the city. And, um, and Paul Rosini emailed us and said, I told Justin these two crossings were under Mark's purview since expense and options on what type of crossing to pay for were not in ours. We're not in ours, he agreed. So during the process, Mark Hudson was, was getting costs as to what it would to actually have Union Pacific or KCS, the owner of the rail, actually build the crossing. So the responsibility of the city would be to bring the roadway up to the crossing and then pay the uh, railroad to put the the crossing in, the actual crossing, because um, that was under their purview. And so 
Justin Haydell said, he said, since we left the proper gaps, the city would have to decide to move now or after the construction was complete, which could actually make a smooth crossing more likely. I agree totally with that. Justin would like some of the emails that show how we got to where we are. Then we will set up a short conference call to set the path forward. He pretty much took the stance that they don't have to do anything with the crossing per se right now, which is good for us. Don, if you have any emails for the crossing that has the thread, including Mark Hudson, I would think that's enough to get us to the conference call. Let's see what those are and I'll get them to Justin. I'd like to say for the record, I've worked in transportation for 36 years. I worked on projects as high, Central Artery Tunnel Project, $350 million, okay? I've, Mark Hudson was one of the greatest public servants that I've ever had the privilege to work with. And he, if he was here, we would not be standing here today. That's what I, that's what I believe as a professional of 36 years. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Mr. President, and, uh, I would like to uh, make the motion that we continue this item um, in light of that information. And also, I'm, I'm a little concerned about having business owners be not aware of what's coming. It, it's, I know residential a uh, person is going to be impacted too. But I'm really concerned about uh, going forward uh, at this point uh, because of the impact that they have on business. And so I think we should just take the information that was given today on the advisement in addition to try to have a, a little bit more dialogue about. I'll, I'll second that. Yeah. Mr. Darby, Mr. Smith, when do y'all want to continue this item for? How long? Um, at least 30 days, I, I, would, I would suggest. Well, well, can we speak on this before? Sure, go ahead. Um, mm -hmm. I, as far as the businesses, uh, Mr. Rauschenbeck, would you please come up and speak to that concern? Sure. Um, and, and we echo everyone's concern. This is not the time to be running into this type of roadblock. So uh, with the direction of the council moving towards the meeting today, uh, we committed to the council um, to go and visit with some of the larger stakeholders out there, uh, one of those being McElroy Metal, one being Bossier Remodeling, one being the energy service providers, those are big businesses that, that operate on that corridor. Um, they were aware, uh, albeit surprised, of what was going on. Many of those businesses have granted right away to the city for the project. Um, the mayor was there. Uh, we, we listened to their questions, answered those to the best of our ability, and have indicated really for the design team to move forward, we need some decision by the council. We agree that closing an at-grade crossing is a big deal, and before we can really pick a direction to run, we want to make sure that we're moving in the, in the right direction. I'm not, I'm, I'm not here to make any claims in opposition of what NTB and TRC has indicated specifically. We've looked through the records, we, we've observed there was a lot of coordination between the design team, the city, Mark Hudson, um, and UP. I think at the end of the day, if you were at the meeting, it, it it was less about that, less about what had been decided in the past and more about we have an opportunity to close an at-grade at crossing and that's what UP wants. Um, the permit is in hand. It's about the agreements with the contractor that's currently working there. That contractor needs an agreement to get on the right of way to do the work, which we can't get. Um, their claim is that the roundabout um, is not designed in accordance with MUTCD standards and, and other problems that they've got with it. But at the end of the day, my impression was their intent is to see that crossing closed. Um, so we can delay it for 30 days. 
Um, and maybe there is a path forward to where we don't have to do that. Um, but I still think strongly UP's desires to see that at grade crossing closed. Would, would the 30 no days adversely affect the project? It's hard for me to answer that. I think so. You think so? Yes, sir. And you said that the permit is in hand. We have permission from UP to build the overpass. I think the original intent was because we were not monkeying with the actual at grade crossing other than improving the approaches because if you've driven that route you know how poor the condition of those are the intent was to improve the approaches so there was no permit um, i've seen correspondence from up that indicated hey we're happy you're doing this we may even contribute in paying for that at grade crossing but none of that seems to be of any memory on on the folks with rail pros and up that we've talked to so um that, I believe, was, was the reason why there wasn't a whole lot of, of energy expended in trying to put a permit together for the at-grade crossing is because there was no real change to that crossing. Um, now, as part of the permit process, when you're working within a railroad right-of-way, you have to get a right of entry agreement. You have to have uh, inspectors that, that are on the project that are provided by the railroad. There's got to be money that exchanges hands. There's a lot of energy that happens once you get a contractor involved. They were at the pre-construction meeting, Rail Pros was, um, in relation to all of this. We've been trying to coordinate it now for months. And so when we finally were able to get a meeting with UP last week, week before last, this was all a bit of a surprise to everybody. Um, you know, I, I'm not I'm not suggesting how you guys make your decision, but I can't say with certainty that it's not going to delay the, the project. I mean, if there's a better way to do this, you know, then, then, then we, would, we would encourage that. Um, we do see some concerns with the roundabout, with the at grade crossing, and how having a rail there, as there is now with the railroad, um, you're not going to be able to use that east-west corridor when a trains there and a train happens to be there quite often that's the whole point of the overpass and when there's a rail there and we're allowing people to turn on the shed road at that at grade crossing there's a very high potential that that traffic can stack up onto the carriageway and create problems there as well and defeat the whole purpose of having the overpass so that is one line of thinking okay yeah let me ask one other thing before okay. we, we get to that so has Menshack pursue that contribution from UP since since they seem to be receptive to that. Has Manshack done that? Pursued what? The, the, the contribution that they would like to make to oh. the project. No, no, we haven't. So why not? That's an that's an old that's just something we've we've discovered as we've gone back through and looked at the files. You know the 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 position of UP and and the mayor was there um, the position of UP at that meeting was that they knew nothing of the roundabout, didn't know the roundabout was going. I say UP, this is their, their, I don't know what their, Rail Pros is the company they use to mitigate these issues. And so there were three representatives from Rail Pros at that meeting that indicated we weren't aware of a roundabout. You know, this is all new to us. Um, we we want to see the at grade crossing closed. I see. So. You, you've gotten the feedback from large stakeholders. Yes, sir. And that's great. I'm glad to hear that. The Shed Road is part of District 2. And as Mr. Harvey mentioned, we, we spent a lot on, on getting that done. It, it took a long time. It was like a dream come true when it happened. So what have you to share with us about residential impact? I have not and, communicated and, specifically with the residents out there. Okay, all right. So, so that's going to be something you do after the facts. We can, you know. I mean, uh, I'm I'm not opposed to whatever direction okay. you desire us to take. I think for the residents there on that corridor between Benton Road west towards the river, if mm -hmm. you will, um, that having the overpass there should improve there there won't be near as much traffic going on that particular spur of shed road upon upon closing um the uh the at grade crossing there and i use it every day too sure 
Yeah, that, that alone is why I recommend to the council to, to give us 30 days to, to get a little bit more clarity on the uh, impact. It's just not, I, it wouldn't be something I would support today. I, I, think, I think it would be advantageous for us to, to look at that. Well, I'd like to point out what, and it's been said, the whole point of the carriageway is to get people from Benton Road over to the other side of the railroad tracks. That, that's why this is being built. It, it's the completion a, of a roadway that was voted on by the people of Bossier City, which started in South Bossier with the Arthur A. Teague Parkway. And we have continued that through the center of the city, and this is the last piece that connects North Bossier with South Bossier without ever being stopped by a railroad track. And, you know, I'm not sure how many residences are even left on the west side of Shed Road other than up starting at Yarborough Street, which they can take Hamilton Road, or they can get on the parkway if they're going north and get off at Benton Road. Um, it, we, we have to look, too, at we've got a contract that was bid we accepted J.B. James as the contractor, and he has a finite amount of time. Is that correct? Correct. And this is a huge, complex project, and so we delay 30 days, and then we decide, well, there needs to be more study. I mean, they are going to look to us for any type of damages that they incur for that delay. And... At the end of the day, I ask, what what are we doing? I mean, the the whole intent of the carriageway, and I'm repeating again, is to get people on the other side of the railroad tracks, and that at grade crossing does not do that. And we all know that train. I think Mr. Maggio said I had somebody said they sat there an hour and three minutes. <laughs> Yeah. And I think Mr. Maggio had someone that said they sat that. there 55 minutes at that at grade crossing. And as we all know, it stops Shed Road, Barksdale Boulevard, and East Texas. There's three major thoroughfares that that train, when it sits and stops, halts all traffic. Once again, the reason for the carriageway was to alleviate that problem so that people could get over the railroad tracks, east-west travel without having to stop and have traffic backed up. So, you know, I think we're doing our due diligence to ensure that the businesses are being taken care of. Um, we we want to integrate any type of design changes to facilitate their trucks entering and exiting the carriageway there at the roundabout. Um, we can certainly uh, have uh, a workshop where we introduce how traffic's going to flow. You know, have one of those displays where you show with the railroad crossing closed, this is how traffic is going to flow. Do you know what I'm talking about, Ben? Somebody the sent animated. One. Somebody sent one to me, or I think it was last week. You know. Um, it's just, I, I think, and I, I would defer to Mr. Jacobs as our legal counsel, what potential liabilities we could incur uh, by delaying this contract. I'll just state this, trying to force a railroad who is pretty much the law unto itself is impossible to do. If the railroad has made up its mind that as a condition of the required permits to finish up Walter O. Bigby, that they want this at grade cr crossing closed. Um, there is no legal action that I'm aware of that would that we could force UP to give us those required permits. I was not at the meeting, as my understanding, the mayor was at the meeting, Ms. Nottingham was at the meeting, Mr. Rauschenbach was at the meeting with rail pros, and it was stated that as a condition of getting these last permits to finish up Walter O. Bigby, that they wanted this at grade crossing closed. And that leads us to where we are today. Did they give a timeline? 
a timeline for? That, that they need to be closed? Uh, at the completion of the project. Okay, like so that's up. That's two or three years from now, probably. Yeah. yeah, that's in the future. You know, we, we delay all the time. We, we just did a 75 day delay on, on Tinsley Park. We, we make delays all the time on projects, uh, contractors request delays. We do it all the time on the council. And, and I agree with Mr. Montgomery, we wanna have free flowing traffic throughout Boulder City, that would be ideal. But also remember that uh, Shed Road was considered a cut through to relieve Airline Drive as well. So, so we, we did our due diligence in finally getting that project done too. So now we are going to uh, regress in a sense because we're not gonna go all the way through Shed Road any longer once that crossing is, is shut down. So, so again, it's my recommendation to the council that we have a, a few more days of dialogue. Uh, it, maybe it won't take 30 days, you know, and, and I think that we should do that. Ben, it, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead. The, the contractor is not requesting this extension. In the past, it, like Tinsley, that was something that we worked out, rain delays, and the contractor requested this additional time. J.B. James is not requesting additional time. We will be imposing upon them a restriction or an extension uh, or, or, you know, basically y'all can't do work here for 30 days because they don't know what's going on. It, 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 it's, it's not the same. And I, I still believe that we potentially have liability um, with the contractor if we institute some type of uh, delay. I mean, I think a good point that was brought out um, was the fact that this isn't gonna happen until the completion of the project. We have two to three years to inform and work with the public before this is done. It, it I don't, I don't know, I don't believe, excuse me? If, if you'd like to speak, please come to the mic, and if you could wait. And this gentleman's been, hold up, sir, no, no, hold sir. On. Which, what do you want me to do? Uh, I'm speaking right now. I heard you speaking out in the audience. I, I apologize, okay? But you did ask but, me to come forward. You pardon me? me? What do you want me to say? So. Yeah, I was speaking to you. But anyway, if, if I could just. Hold on one second. Sure. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Anyway, um, now I've lost my train of thought, but uh, I think, we're, yeah, the fact that we have two to three years <clears throat> to work with the public, work with the businesses to ensure that there is a transition, um, that, that they understand how traffic's gonna flow. Uh, we're gonna take the time to redesign the roundabout to where it, it, it facilitates um, flow of traffic for all the semi trucks that are going back to McElroy metals and some of the other uh, businesses and facilities back there so uh, I think it's been stated the fact that we know that Union Pacific is requiring this for us to continue with the project is that correct and I'm sorry sir you have the floor if you could state your name and address yes sir David Johnson 4609 General Yule you mentioned you mentioned uh, Arthur A. Teague and 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 I just wanted to speak to that for Sobo. Although this is going to cause a few people an inconvenience, anything, any any time change happens, it does. But to me, uh, this has drug on a long time, and I think this time of year, if we go another 30-day delay, it's just insane because we're moving into the time of year where these guys are going to be shut down with Mother Nature. Um, I think we need to move forward with this and get it done as soon as possible. We've drug it out long enough. Are there going to be inconveniences to all of us at certain times? Yes, but for the good of this city and Arthur Ray Teague, I think we need to move forward with this, gentlemen. I mean, it's 30 days. Is, it, to, as a citizen of the taxpayer, it sounds crazy to me. I appreciate you bringing that up, but I, I think we need to move forward. That's that's what I have. Thank and you. correct me if I'm wrong, this is the... No. That's the same track that crosses East Texas Street. The, yes. And it crosses Barksdale Boulevard. Yes. Goes across the trestle river into the yard. Yes. Right. Now, if you remember stories on the news, probably <clears> six <throat> months ago, they, they, those trains sit there three hours sometimes on the tracks. 
Now, it's not, this is not going to fix that. I mean, unless you live up in North Bossier, but, you know, uh, it's horrible to sit there. I know the man on the end down there, Mr. Chandler, would, for over the last four or five years would call me, you know. <laughs> but those, that's not going to fix that problem. We talked to Chandler Construction uh -huh. as well. Yeah, that's not going to fix the problem of East Texas. You know, the only thing, and I get calls from everywhere, go get my ticket. We can't give them a ticket. We don't know who to give the ticket to. We tried that before, you know, but somehow we got to work with a train to get. Uh, Sometimes, like I said, when they cross East Texas, cross Barksdale, then you got one coming north south on Barksdale Boulevard. He stopped because they're still stopped there. I mean, we have to do something with the trains. We know that. We got to get our congressmen involved. That's what the state guys don't have no power. It's the union that the railroads have, it's the biggest union there is. So we need to get our congressmen involved, I think, to stop all this crap. They stop it in their, their tracks, I understand it. But still, we gotta move people around, you know? It, the, now, the other thing is, I mean, yes. I, I don't know, I don't know, Mr. Darby, I, I understand what you're saying, I, I agree. You know, if, can we go for two weeks? Is that gonna hurt you? What's the, what's the alternative plan? Yeah, I so I just wanted to interject this. There's no path forward without a redesign of that intersection. Okay, I, and I think the ability to have an ad grade crossing at Shed Road, this is my opinion for what it's worth. I'm not Mark Hudson, but my opinion, the ability to cross there is remote. It's remote. Um, but there's no path through this, whether we close the ad grade crossing or not, where that, that intersection does not need to be redesigned. We, we the city engineering office, don't want to engage in that effort until we have a direction forward. So I think it's important that we still have to work on that intersection. We still have to do some redesign of that intersection and all that's going to take time. We, we are, as soon as we learned that there was an issue there from UP, which was on a Thursday, and it's a big issue, we came to the council on a Monday, said, hey, we've got a problem here. and and our recommendation, that's purely our recommendation is, is that for, to facilitate, as Councilman Montgomery has indicated, that north-south corridor, unobstructed north-south corridor in Bossier City, that removal of that at grade crossing was, was a good decision and one that we would recommend. It's not the only decision that you can make there. So I'll just leave it at that. that we're, we're looking for a direction to go with the design, but having, having concurrence from the council, in our opinion, is needed before we do that. Mr. President, if, if I could make a comment. Yes, sir, Mr. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, well, this could be an opportunity that when life throws you a lemon, you make lemonade. Uh, I've been concerned about where the parkway was going to merge with Benton Road. There'd be a stoplight there. And potential traffic backups, and I like to see traffic flowing, not stopped at a red light. There'll be a lot of traffic going north, a lot of traffic going south. If we take the roundabout out at the Shed Road crossing, look at the potential of putting in a efficient roundabout at Benton Road and the uh, Parkway, and but and that way, the as uh, Mr. Harvey was saying. The, the traffic that, that may be coming down our improved shed road could zigzag north if they're heading west and quickly loop around that loop and go down the parkway and it would be a win-win situation. Uh, yes, it's a little delay, but they're not ever stopped by a train and they're not stopped by a, a signal that could potentially be one or two signals before you got through. So. There's a lot of time for this. You got to redesign Shed Road. I won't be here, you know, by the time this thing gets done. But uh, I encourage you to look at the potential of of shifting funds from that roundabout to to one at uh, Benton Road and where the Walter O. Big Bean meets. So that's I'm, just my I'm, comments. I'm glad Mr. Irwin brought that up because that was going to be my question. If Union Pacific's big issue is the roundabout right there, is there something else? A, a redesign of that section from Shed Road to, to where it's going to connect with Benton that we could do that would satisfy them that will allow that crossing to stay open. I don't think so, but I can't answer that. You know, 
uh, and I, like I said, I don't know there's going to be a tremendous amount of funds that would go from that roundabout because there's still going to be improvements needed at that intersection to facilitate truck traffic. Um, we're talking right turn lanes, things of left turn lanes, things like that that would have to be put in there to not interrupt that north south route. I think one of the concerns that I would have is for, for, for folks that are driving down Shed Road, if they want to hop on the carriageway, if we close that, if we close that crossing, they're going to have to either turn and go up Benton, get on the carriageway and then backtrack, or go down Texas or go down Benton, turn on Texas, and then hop on there at Hamilton Road. It just seems like the, the folks coming down Shed Road, this is going to be of no benefit to them because um, they're going to hit a, they're going to either have to go out of their way to get back on their way or they're going to have to go through a lot of traffic and so I think it's in our best interest to keep that crossing open um, whatever direction we have to go to do that I, I think it I think it's going to keep traffic flowing um, you know regardless so that, this, that's my opinion this whole project is about north south traffic correct the origins 20 years ago mr darby was here mr williams was here we made a commitment that we would continue the arthur ray teague parkway it stopped at what is now diamond jacks um, the the voters had always uh, when they passed the original tax wanted that parkway to continue north and and, and it that's what we're talking about is moving people from north and south throughout the city without a railroad crossing. The, uh, am I correct? You're correct, sir. Uh, it, it, we're bringing in things that we're trying to cloud the picture as to what we're trying to do um, as far as traffic flow. We're bringing in this east-west quarter as if that's going to make a huge difference and, and when in fact this roadway is about north south traffic flow and continuing what the voters voted on I, what year was it that that was originally voted on in the 80s the tax for the Arthur A. Teague Parkway somewhere around yeah, there it was. I and year it was. you know I think it's imperative that we continue forward. We have a contract in place. We have a contractor that's moving forward and expecting us to do what we're going to do. Um, UP has clearly stated that uh, they want that closed. And um, we on this council, um, uh, for my 20 years that I've been on here, um, negotiating with the railroad is non-existent um, it, it am I correct then I mean it you know when they tell you something that's the way it's gonna be and I mean they to mr. Williams and mr. Darby's point I mean those trains sit there on the track they could care less if they sit there two or three hours to be honest with you so we're in a position where we need to move forward we have a contract in place we have two to three years to work with all of the people and, and do the best for them that we can prior to that at grade crossing at Shed Road being closed. So it's my opinion that we should move forward, close the at grade crossing, do whatever we can to assist those businesses and uh, residents that these are the alternates now upon that closing. And we have plenty of time to do it. Uh, uh, Mr. Jacob, you, you, you did not answer uh, Mr. Montgomery Corson or his issue about the legality yep. potential if we delay. We have a contract in place with certain time delays. Mm -hmm. And the contractor expects, you know, to complete certain phases within certain time periods. If the contractor is delayed due to the lack of access, um, a denial by Union Pacific, um, then they can't finish on time. They have resources that may or may not be committed to other projects that are stuck here in Bossier. There would be, uh, you know, 
increased time delays, uh, you know, things of that nature. We can't get these men and these equipment to, you know, Project B or Project C, things of that nature. We could be liable for that. We could be liable for cost overruns, materials, things of that, operational cost, um, all, it's potentially, uh, you know, anything. Okay. Um, that, you know, if our delay in not securing the permit prevents a timely um, completion of the project um, by the contractor, and that failure, uh, you know, that, that untimely completion costs them money, mm -hmm. then we could potentially be liable for that, yes. Okay. And I, and I do want to stress the fact that, you know, if Union Pacific says we're not going to issue the permit, <clears throat> unless you close this at grade crossing yeah. then in the council wishes to keep that crossing open the only option that we have would be extremely time consuming and costly lit litigation in federal court and sitting here today I, the, the outcome would be extremely precarious would be the best way that I could put it That's my answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but according to, to Mr. Rosenberg, uh, we already got the permit in hand. We have a permit to cross okay. the railroad. We did not get a permit for the at-grade crossing because we didn't believe a permit was needed at that location because nothing's being improved there other than the surface of the pavement, if that makes sense. I'm confused. What, what permit do we have? We have the permit to go over their railroad. Oh, like we can pass? Sir? Like the overpass? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. okay. So that permit is hand, but even that permit requires a access agreement that has to be entered into by the contractor and the railroad because they will be accessing that right of way to do work. And UP will not sign that agreement as the current project stands. Okay. I think that's what you need to make clear is that you may have a permit, but that doesn't mean the contractor can continue. That's correct. So you, that needs to be clarified that just because you have that permit doesn't allow the contractor to continue. The railroad has to grant access to J.B. James. Correct. You, so, and we, we do a lot of work in the railroad right, right away here in Bossier City, a lot of railroads. It's, this is common. So we get a permit to put a utility underneath their railroad or to do anything in and around you know, within there right away, we have to get a permit to do that. But once it goes into construction, the contractor performing the work has to be involved in that process. They have to have the correct insurance. They have to engage with the, per the UP. They have to pay UP's inspectors. Here, that would be rail pros to come in and do that work. And they were at the pre-construction conference. We always knew this was part of that effort. We've been trying to get those agreements taken care of for months and could not understand what, what was happening, what's going on, what, 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 why can't we get this? So we, I don't know who, somebody poked UP in the eye, we got a meeting with them, and here we are today. Um, they, what was communicated when we were with Rail Pros was, we can get to having those agreements in hands very quickly, within a day or two, if the city agrees to close the at grade crossing at the end of construction or we can pursue other methods of what I don't know um, but it, it just there was no sense of this is no big deal design it some other way and do it this way and you'll get across that wasn't presented in in that meeting the 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 intent was close the at grade crossing that was their intent was to close the at grade crossing so they want to close it? They want it closed. So it, uh, it takes three years to build this parkway, then you don't think we could talk to them? I'm certain we can get with them. And try to keep it open? We can, okay. we can do a lot of things. All of those things are just going to take, take time. Amanda, would you like to say now, something? I don't want to belabor the point, but I was at the meeting, and um, one of the biggest issues is the safety concern there that has um, an extremely high accident rate at that particular crossing. And so that was something, my understanding is that UP cannot close the crossing, that we have to
do the closure, but that is um, definitely a concern. I know also with the traffic backing up, it is a concern with our first responders being able to navigate through that. And so um, I think you've got a, a big public safety issue there that um, this closure would address as well. How many, but the how traffic many accidents off? have occurred in the last six months? I don't know. In the last six months, they gave us um, statistics for about the last 25 years, and it was um, uh, it was close to 30, which they said in 25 years doesn't sound like a lot. But they said they have some in the Dallas metro area that have one. So um, statistically, for for them, it is very high. Okay, you thinking it has occurred in the last 12 months? I don't have that information. I wouldn't want to speak okay. on that. It's been closed for probably the last four or five for other construction through there. Last 24 months. I don't know. Okay. Any idea how many trains that track, I mean, how many times they use that track in a, in a week? UP in a week, mm -hmm. I don't know that UP had indicated that it's not, I'm thinking of a different crossing. So I, I don't know. To I mean, specifically, if, if they used it every day, one <laughs> time a day for 30 minutes, we're going to close it 24 seven for them to use it for an hour a day, basically. I mean, we, they just dictate to us what city streets we're going to close and leave open. I'm telling you, they got the they biggest use. union there is. We got and they are, our, they did say I they're running. Get your congressman to call them and let's get on them. But their trains are two to three miles long. I so they are, me. if you look aware. down, uh, Extremely Coming long. back down Benton Road out there out of the parish, that's the same track right there, isn't it? Yeah. So they're, they're, they're using three and four tracks out there, and they're sitting there waiting mm -hmm. to get in. I mean, they, this, this got to be more than more than two a day. They, it come, is. they come twice a day. I'm talking about that For intersection. Sure. Oh, the, well, there's seven tracks. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I will just say that uh, I catch enough trains at that track that I never use it, ever. If I need to go north, I somehow navigate to Benton Road and just use that. To me, it's useless. Close crossing. I know it affects a few people, but it's uh, it's a con extreme inconvenience when <coughs> we're building a first-class overpass over the railroad. They'll be safe, quick, and you'll never be stopped. Right. And they were open to sharing concerns about it blocking multiple, you know, going on to Texas right. Street as well. So that was something they were willing to to pass I along to look that into. In but. Two years, and I go north south all the time. It's horribly inconvenient to me. I'm not speaking for everybody, but Mr. Mayor, what's what's your What's your thought? What say you? Well, thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> I was with Mr. Rochenbach, and we did talk. We did go talk to all the owners, and we had a long, lengthy talk with all each and every one of them, and they were, you know, they understood, and they all agreed that it, you know they could live with what a uh, blockage right there, and as what Mr. Smith said earlier, that it would, you know, on, on Shed Road, it would kind of close that up. People had to go left or right. Well. That train is going to be there because our family has a business right there by that, and it's closed anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour all the time. That's why I used to call President Williamson and tell him, and I would, I would be upset because I would be hung up by it. If people are going west on Shed, they're going to be stopped right there at that light. They're going to have to go left or right if they're going to go because that train is going to be there for a long time. If they're coming down that carriageway and they want to go east on Shed, it's going to block up all the all that and go on to the parkway. So what good is the parkway with it all blocked up right there when it's not going to give an easement to Benton Road? And uh, but that, that but that railroad that train isn't there all day. It's there at least three three times a day, and it blocks the traffic at, at least three times a day. Eight o'clock, it, it only, it only, twelve o'clock, and five o'clock. Right yes, sir. Now. And that's why everybody's upset. <laughs> it's always on the time they got to go to lunch and the time they're coming home. <laughs> But and uh, and it, not only does it close shed, it closes Texas and, and Barksdale too, and, that, and that's kind of 
I think it'd do like a shift change or something like that, and the guys are taking their time getting off the train and whatnot. Too. I've seen them get out of the engine, get out of the engine, and go in and eat in a restaurant. And, yeah. and I've called the railroad about that. So I, I, I am, just I, I, I am all the time concerned about, about all the, the residents and the businesses. That's why I went with Mr. Rochenbach because I wanted to them to know that I was concerned. And I said, look, this might, this is probably going to happen. Is it going to affect your businesses? And they they with the ones already on Shed Road with Bose remodeling and all that, they were kind of really not. I mean they. Their, their, their business is blocked up the whole time that train's there because all, there's all these cars all in front of their business. They can't, they can't go leave or come back in. So, and, and it's just, and it'll be easier for McElroy. It's going to be hard for them to, and those, those real, real long trailers to go around that circle with all that weight, you know, and to turn that corner. So that, that's, uh, a, that's a good reason to maybe reconsider a roundabout right there. Yeah, but if you put a roundabout down at Benton Road, it's going to take up so much property, you know. So, I uh, take it that you're in favor of the closure of the... I'm sorry to say, sir, but I mean, I'm not sorry to say, and I won't say I'm sorry to say, uh, I'm, you know, for the, I am for the, I believe it would make a lot of the traffic to flow a lot better on the okay. carriageway, yes, sir. Okay. All right, so I see the Chiefs want to yeah, jump in, so okay, we say something. Oh, go ahead, Brad. I don't want to talk about whether you close it or not. I want to talk about time. Time's of the essence to us. I listen to it on the radio. We're diverted to the train, diverted to the train. Heard it three times yesterday. When they block right now and we pick up somebody uh, near your store, we have the only hospital in Bossier, Willis Nine Bossier. We got to go all the way to the interstate, come around, come back through all that traffic. To me, time, the quicker we can cross that railroad track, the better off everybody will be. That's all I want to say about the whole deal. And you said you didn't come up and talk voluntarily, did you? <laughs> I, I, I know, thank you. It, it's, it's no doubt it's the same thing for us. Trains present a problem whenever it comes to somebody breaking in your house, whenever you need assistance. And the longer this project is delayed, the the greater likelihood of somebody being adversely affected whenever it comes to the protection of life our property and, and so uh, we're all frustrated by the trains it, it impacts us on a day in day out basis just as a safety matter that intersection you have McElroy metal who have deliveries several times a day that typically would have 18 wheelers crossing those tracks you've got slow moving 18 wheelers you've got fast moving trains and it's a potential great potential for a serious accident at that intersection if it continues to be allowed to remain open the way that it is. I mean, it's inevitable. We're going to have crashes. I don't have the data of how many crashes we have there, but anytime you have 18 wheelers and, and trains, there's the potential for serious bodily injury or death. And the only other, one other thing to add, and this was, you know, if you look at it, Councilman Darby, you, it's about half a mile between that intersection at Shed Road North mm -hmm. to the new intersection of Walter or Bigby Carriageway, you know, that north-south route. So it's, it's not like you're going way out of your way north to turn around and come back. It's, it's a half a mile up the road. It's a, it's, a, it's a quick jaunt up there that you'll be glad to take when that railroad's crossing Shed Road. I just want to reiterate, you're correct when it blocks Shed Road, East Texas, and Barksdale, that's what we normally see when it gets to no that point, and we have no other access. Yeah. But I want to make the point that you made. It's been closed for five months now, and we've been dealing with it. It's not like, it, how long has it been? At least five At months. At least five months. So we've been altered our response and everything to that, which he has districts that alter that. I have districts that alter that. So, but. Just to be aware, we've been dealing with that already. But even with that, when it blocks all three, that's a whole different ball game. We got to go either to Hamilton, the traffic, come around to Benton, come back up to Willis Nine Bozier. That's a pretty long transport. Yeah. I'd have to get you the mileage off of it, but it wouldn't take me long because I heard yesterday diverted by a train. All I got to pull is Trauma Six and see where they went and get the mileage off of it. And sort but of the Parkway would resolve that. Any way the we carriage can, way. Yes. If we can get from that side of the tracks to the other side of the tracks, that's all I'm interested in. 
that, that makes life grand for us. Guys, I think we about beat this horse to death. Uh, <laughs> well, we were on the train. <laughs> <laughs> beat this train to death. Dude. On the track. Yeah. Catch a ride. Yeah. Huh? On the track, yeah. Uh, the appreciate all the comments, though, and a good discussion. The motion on the table is to continue the item for 30 days, which would be December the 7th. So if Mr. Darby doesn't want to withdraw that, that's what the motion is on the table. Does everybody understand? I'm going to ride this train. you got to hop it, though, when they stop. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to get off. I have a motion by Mr. Darby and a second by Mr. Smith. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to cast a vote when it comes up. Huh? It should be up. We're voting against it. You don't want to contend it. Let's see what we're doing. Motion carries to continue it for 30 days. Can we see? I'm really. I've, since uh, we're continuing. We're, we've already voted. We're done now. Man, we just like to see if, if you can, we can do it expedited, if, if that's possible. And I know you know that. Mr. Darby and Mr. Smith, are you guys uh, uh, amenable to if it if y'all can work it out within the 30 days to bring it back before? Yeah, it's yeah. it's not a, you know, it doesn't have to be 30 days, but just as long as we get some dialogue before 30 days. Yes, sir. I would certainly, in, in light of this, recommend to Mr. Jacobs that he reaches out to J.B. James. Uh, Mr. Rauschenbach would be part of that uh, two-man team. Uh, to let them know what we're doing uh, so that we can mitigate any type of um, potential um, loss or what they see as a potential loss in their constru construction contract. It, it would be very wise to get ahead of that rather than deal with this down the road and they bring it up unbeknownst to us and uh, because if Mr. Jacobs corrected me, we could end up um, you know, in mitigation or arbitration, wherever, or court. So I think it's imperative that we be open and communicate with the contractor as to our intentions um, and, and what we're doing and, and how we can work with them to make sure that this doesn't delay their performance under the contract that we voted on. And if y'all would not, if you would please report back, I'd appreciate that. Sure. All right, Phyllis. The council's aware of what's going on. Adopt a resolution to adopt the five-year <clears throat> capital projects plan, first and final reading. So moved. Second. Council, do you have any questions? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of one police communications officer for the Bossier City Police Department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Council? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a tax audit clerk due to a resignation in the sales tax department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions from the audience? Any questions from the council? <coughs> Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring or promotion of an animal control officer one due to resignation and backfilling any position this may create for public works animal control division. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Wait, can I talk to you about this when we get done? No, not now. Please. Well, <laughs> <laughs> any questions from the audience? Any questions from the council? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a superintendent of public works to, for due to a resignation, funds to be transferred from herbicide and mosquito to animal control with no net change to the budget. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Questions from the council? 
Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a part-time kennel worker to be paid from budgeted salaries and benefits. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. <coughs> Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a tax administrator due to a resignation in the sales tax department. First and final reading. So moved. Moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Questions from the council? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance declaring that an emergency exists in the city of Bossier City, which affects property, public health, and safety due to a deteriorated cross drain at Ella and Co. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Any questions from the council? Please cast your vote. Mr. Maggio, are you a yay or a nay? Yay. Thank you. It came up. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance adding civic center supervision to the job duty of the executive assistant, Carol King Anderson, and increasing the salary by $18,000 for the increased job responsibilities. First reading. So moved. Second. Uh, I do want to thank Carol. I know she's been working over there last week, this weekend. Got something big tonight. Uh, so I commend you and I appreciate it. I'm sure the council does too. And I know I saw calling the man on the corner and the other Mr. Chandler. I know Miss uh, Carroll is I mean she is gonna be a plus to that. She's already got it shining, smelling better, cleaner. <laughs> but it, what it is is the three guys over there, they just left all un unannounced and it's kinda of, well kinda of announced, but Miss Carroll was not good enough to get up, stand up and take it over and it's and it's gonna become a very a better place, I believe. Yeah. yeah, maybe we can uh, start getting some people in there, though. I appreciate it, Ms. Carroll. Any questions from the audience? Any questions from the council? Please cast your vote. I do want to say I, I, I appreciate the healthy discussion. You know, uh, you know, we got to, you know, Mr. make a decision, and, and it was made, so we, we live with it and we move on. Yeah, he, but, he, he, Mayor, you got it. Something you want to say? I want to say it was approved. What? It was voted for. Yeah. Okay. Voted motion carried. Well, of course. Motion carried. I didn't, I didn't hear her say it. You I'm didn't sorry. Let me finish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any comments on the council? All right, meeting adjourned. <laughs>